way up to this glassing knob. Earlier this morning, I I shot at a big bear. I spent basically the day after we shot him, just scouring, like gritting the, this ridge right here where we last saw him, just trying to find him if he, if he was dead. No luck, he hasn't left us much. He hasn't left any blood, any hair, hardly any tracks. So we've been just blindly grinning. And I would say we've done a pretty thorough job on those ridges, but there could be the possibility that we just missed some spots. So what we've done is we're now on the ridge across and we're just gonna spend tonight just trying to glass into these little pockets here to see if we can find this bear just piled up somewhere or if he's still alive, we can pinpoint him and potentially put another one in him. It's just what it is. So, we'll see what we can glass up. We are back at camp, getting ready to cook some more dehydrated meals. Tonight, I'm craving cheese, craving fat. I basically starved all day today. I still have all my chips and most of my jerky. So I'm definitely calorie deficient today. So we're gonna eat this. I still have some uh, bone broth that I didn't finish yesterday. Gotta finish eating beef jerky and uh, chips from Today and yesterday, got new water, so we're good on water. Came back a little early just because we had some camp chores, but I think the goal is after we get settled down tonight, uh, tomorrow is a switch of strategy. What we've been doing for the past like three days is we've basically just done macro glassing, right? Sit on a vantage point and just glass as much country as you can. And we've seen one deer which I believe is a doe, we, haven't, we didn't even get to confirm. And we also saw Hank the Tank, the black bear that I am in still, still in the process of trying to find. So tomorrow morning, Nate and I, we have this, this creek drainage that we're gonna check on because that's like the last place that we can think of where he would go because this is all burned country, so it's relatively, like the ridges are relatively open. There's not a lot of cover. Down at the bottom where there's this creek, there's a lot of lush green grass. There's a lot of trees and vegetation, provides a lot of shade, provides a lot of cover. And that's kind of where we think he's headed down. So tomorrow, we're going to like simultaneously like still hunt the timber for, for deer and try to find my bear. If he's not in this creek, I legit have no idea where this bear went. And... Uh, as unfortunate as it would be to say that, that's just the reality of what happened. We are headed down into the timber to do a day of timber stalking since glassing hasn't really been turning much up for us. So we're gonna switch up tactics and 
See what we find down in the valley floor. Find a bear. We might find a bear. We absolutely might. made it out of the timber and we're now into just a bunch of burns. I shot my bear just right up here yesterday and we last saw it like dip onto this side like this. So we just came through this forest over here, didn't find it. And at this point, I could have gone anywhere. Up, this way, that way, this way, that way, this way cut on this side and then ran back that way. We have no idea, but we're gonna stop and get water. I was really hoping that if we were to find the bear, we would have found him within that stretch that we just came down, but we never, never found him. So uh, what we will do is we're gonna hike into this basin this way over here. It's an untouched basin and we just haven't been there. We've been through basically everything you see from here. And then I shot my bear directly behind the camera right now. And we're gonna hike down a little bit further, follow the creek, and then eventually hike up and over into this other basin and drop down into that basin and just see what's in there. So this is kind of the country we've been looking for through this hunt. This tall grass, from what we can tell in our limited knowledge of high buck, is that this is what they're eating at this time of year. Um, this is the exact type of grass that I killed my buck last year in. And then, I don't know if you can see, but we have this matted down grass in this area, right by some of these live trees in the burn. And so what happens is these bucks that live in these burn areas, there's really good nutrients in the areas of the burn, but there's not a whole lot of cover. And so they'll feed out in the burn, and then they still have this cover, these little clumps of trees that are live and healthy to bed in during the day that give shade and protection. So that's this is what we're looking for. And if we're getting into this country, that makes me happy.
snuck over to this other basin. We're just barely peeking in. The basin's over here. It's deep. It's a little sketch, but we can only see the bottom half of the basin. The top half is still over here. No, I was just gonna say we might not see if it was bedded. It see it if it was bedded. My lips are numb. Let deer walk around. Yeah. We just gotta wait till they walk around. Right. The deer I've seen before walk around. <laughs> maybe these ones don't. They just. Maybe these deer in here don't have legs. Transport from one. They slide. One tree to behind another tree. These deer in here slide by nature. I don't know. Going into five days in without a deer, like. I didn't know we were deer hunting. I thought we were grouse hunting. <laughs> we are. We're having a trophy grouse trip. Yeah. We are working our way back to camp. We have a pretty treacherous hike back to camp, so we figured we uh, leave that basin while we still have some light, so hop back over onto this little basin and we have been looking over like these little benches where it's just like what I think is prime to glass up mule deer in and every single one of these ridges that we've passed by like countless dozens of them just not a single deer it's almost like to the point where it's comedic with how much country we're covering and how little deer we're seeing. But this goes with a saying, man, this high country deer hunt is not an easy hunt. Country is treacherous, country is tough, difficult terrain, and you pair that with low density deer, this is the type of hunt you get. But man, look at that country. So we're slowly gonna just hunt our way back to camp as soon as I stop the last other way, I think I the wrong. So it's down to do, I think to do. There's two of them. You saw a different one. You saw the fawn. I saw the doe. It's a doe and a fawn. Dude, Nate and I were like joking around. We're like, maybe, maybe these deer don't live on the ground. Maybe they like, they, they sleep in the trees and they climb trees and hang out in the trees. Like we were like, just mind blown with how much country we've covered and not seen a single deer. Oh my goodness. Let's, uh, let's slowly peek onto this side so we can see the valley. Okay, 
ISO confirmed three does. Uh, but it seems like they were bedded in this patch of timber, small patch of timber down at the flat of this basin. See if there's more deer that come out. This third doe keeps looking behind her, and oftentimes when a deer keeps looking behind them, it usually means one of two things, more deer or a predator. But if it's a predator, they're alert. This one's just looking behind, casually feeding, and then looking behind, so there might be more deer. Oh, there's one in the timber. There's one more in the timber. Okay, I was just saying that the third doe kept looking behind her. And I was casually just filming that patch of timber with the camera. And while I was doing that, there's the fourth deer in the patch of the timber. I think four does, but the point is there's a whole herd of deer down there. It might just be all does. It's a bachelorette of does. <laughs> I've never been so happy to see deer, dude. <laughs> it's so cool. We made about a two mile trek from where we were glassing the does to camp. The does were directly in between us and our camp. So instead of going straight down to where the does were and blowing them out of the area, we decided to skirt the side walls of that basin just to keep the does like clueless about our presence. So we made it over here maybe about maybe an hour. So we were cruising fast. We got very lucky that the bench that we're camped on is an entire bench all the way to our glassing point or where we saw those four does. So, uh, we're gonna eat dinner and we have some discussions to do because I think by afternoon when Nate and I were sitting at the creek, we were like, if we don't see anything today, let's pack up and go to a different basin. That was the game plan, but we saw deer. <laughs> so granted, they're not bucks and they're just does. And we know during this time of the year, like does are in a completely different area. Not completely, but they they do tend to hang out in different areas than bucks. And so, you know, it's just one of those things like, well, we see deer here. Does that mean there's bucks around or is this strictly a doe area? Just fuel up and then discuss a little bit, hit the sack and whatever we discuss tonight, that's what we'll do tomorrow. So tonight for my dinner, I'm having the Peak Refuel Bison Ranch Mashers, Sour Patch Kids, Welch's Fruit Snacks, and a bunch of jerky. Mm. And now we're about ready to just clean up here and pack up and head up and over and up and over again and then up and over and then drop into the next basin yeah this is our home for the past three nights or so so pretty bittersweet to say goodbye but we had our experience in here saw the fordos just in between this peak and that peak, they were down in this flat. We were glassing them from this point, so we just made a loop around back to camp. And uh, just kind of got our stuff laid out on this log here. That's all our trash, we're gonna pack that stuff out. We have to say goodbye to Hank the Tank. We don't know where he is. Um, but that's the way it goes sometimes, unfortunately. That's Nate, we just got out of bed. Just gonna take it slow, and then whenever we're ready to pack out of here, we will go. Day number five. It's essentially uh, the closing chapter for that bear, and uh, we did not find that bear, and I don't think we will.
due to the circumstances of what happened and knowing that that first shot is more than likely a fatal shot I'm just gonna do what any other hunter would do and that is notch my tag and uh, if I want to go shoot a second bear I'll go home and go buy my second bear tag but if I had cleanly missed that bear or just grazed off some hair I wouldn't be notching my tag but knowing that that first shot was uh, most likely stomach and liver which is a, a lethal hit I'm sure this bear is dead potentially not in this basin because Nate and I we we've searched through this basin um, he could have just tucked under a log that we missed or something but we didn't find him but we, we put in some effort to find this bear in this basin and we couldn't so uh, today's the 23rd but just because we didn't find him today I'm gonna notch the date of when I shot him which is the 21st September 21st that's what I'm notching my first tag for the season I packed the same food for seven days and after like yesterday I was so done with jerky and I was falling behind on keeping up with eating all my food that I've organized per day and so I'm behind like three days worth of jerky and he put his jerky where he put some of my jerky in bone broth and just boiled it so I was like maybe a change of texture and a change of flavor would make me want to eat my protein again so we'll see He was right. This tastes almost like stew. And that bone broth just hits different in the morning. right there that's the basin we hunted for the past two three days we are up out of the side walls of this basin up and over that drop down into the basin behind that trekked around and we are now sitting right on the saddle that overlooks this basin that we're gonna momentarily drop down into and camp and hunt for the remainder of the high buck season but got over here and uh, decided to take a little breather before we hike in there just glass around to see if there's any deer first but since we're just sitting it's snack time There goes all the deer in the basin. Made it down to our last basin for this trip. Dropped down from the top of the saddle. Down here, it's just a bunch of burn and we found this little flat spot right here. That's Nate's tent. That's my shelter. Got everything I need in there. And then for the hunting stuff, Got my pack ready to go on glass. Cameras, water. Food is hanging over here and over there. <sighs> Truth is, feeling pretty beat. 
I don't know. Like I was feeling pretty good this morning. And as soon as we got down here, it's just like a whoosh of like tiredness, <laughs> but no time to be tired. Day five and day six is for grinding, not for uh, complaining. So this is what we're going to hunt. If we drop down on the backside of this, it's just a bunch of little burn benches where it looks like a lot of bucks can be bedded in. And then down at the bottom here is just a big old creek that runs all the way to the top of or the head of that basin. We can glass all of that side. And we can still hunt a lot of this burn too. So overcast guys. Deer might move early today. Deer might be out moving right now, but we're at camp talking to the camera. So what are we doing, man? What are we doing, Nate? We don't know how to hunt deer if we're sitting at camp doing nothing peace out camp hello deer there's definitely a lot more deer sign in this little basin here than what we've been hunting the past three days some of these tracks look pretty big might be buck tracks we're camped right in the middle of it but Also, that side strip of my boot ripped. So, it's time to go buy a new boot. You have all this burn country, and there's a little divot right here, and it's a nice bench for bucks or deer to bed on. And then it's just constant with all these benches. Steep, benches out, up, benches out, steep here and we're camped on a bench and this just it's like a staircase all the way down to the creek so we're gonna hike over here and just go sit on one of these rocks to glass down into this basin down the down to the creek because we've been glassing high this entire week and we haven't seen any deer up high so they've got to be down low decided to just sit down on this rock because it's pretty thick down here and we don't want to risk pushing any other deer out of here. It's not the best visibility just because there's so many burned trees in front of us but we have like gaps through these trees where we can just glass the other side of this basin. We can glass a little meadow down at the flat where the creek is. It's dead quiet down here. 
wind is blowing up from where, to where we came from, so we have good wind for now. It's eventually going to shift when it starts to cool off. sitting on this rock and Nate with the eagle eyes just spotted the first bug of the trip and he's just a solid 4x4 four 1481 yards right around this elevation that we're sitting at too dude he's outside the ears dude he's big he's big <laughs> I knew he was gonna be at that elevation dude Looks like a forky to me. Really? Dude, they're sparring. Are you getting this? I'm working on it. Nate just spotted the second buck. The second buck was bedded. That's not the. Do you see the direction they're both looking? I think he's a forky, dude. I don't think he's legal. You sure? I'm pretty. I'm pretty positive. Yeah, he he's a forky. He's poking. He's poking the bigger buck. Yeah, he's he's a forky. He's not a. I don't think he's legal. Unless he has eye guards. There's gotta be more bucks, dude. Yeah, he's he's a two by two. He's not legal. I got him. I'm getting this. Okay, good. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Oh my goodness, look at that. Dude, it's funny because that two point has the body just about the same size as him. And the back. Oh, I'm getting this. Oh my goodness. Oh my gosh. I'm freaking out. It's fun. Okay, so we have two bucks. Dude, that two points body is huge. Massive. Maybe even bigger than the fours. I know. The four point looks so like puny. <laughs> yeah, he's a forky. He's not he's not legal. It's <laughs> getting bullied now. I mean, it's your buck, so don't just go with what I'm saying. If you have a, if you feel very strong about something, 
feel strong that I'd like to see them again. You see them? Wait a minute. I think I've got two more deer. I, I think I think I have two more deer. Where? Hold up. Let me confirm. I might have just been seeing things, but... They sure did look deary to me. Sense. It's the exact same thing as last year. Yeah, the does are low. Two years of knowledge built on each other. Do you see the two points still? I think he's uh, to the top of that guy. Top right, like 10 yards maybe. That's where I last saw him. I can't believe I spotted a buck, dude. <laughs> it was bound to happen, man. I feel so validated. <laughs> I feel like you've been selling yourself short, dude. <laughs> okay, we have been just sitting here, covering ground with the glass. I just spotted two more deer. I think it's a doe and a fawn. So we have a doe and a fawn down by the creek below us. We have a doe, another doe and a fawn like level to us on the same hillside that those bucks are on. And there may be like five, six, maybe 700 yards from where those bucks are. But the elevation that these two does that I just spotted now are like level to where we are sitting right now. And there's one, th there's a lesson that I've learned about high country deer hunting. If all you see are does, look higher for the bucks. So far, everything we've seen from like our elevation down has just been does. The two bucks that we've seen are like way higher up the mountain. So if we drew like a, like a line just across the middle of this basin, the bottom half is all does and the upper half is all bucks. I don't know what's been going on, but like our hunt has just been like switched like that. We've gone essentially five and a half days, hardly seeing any deer. And we're like closing in on the second half of day five. And there's like deer here, deer there, deer there, deer over here, just deer everywhere. I have a feeling it's a doe because it's pretty low, but I need to find it again. It's just walking. Where at? This shoot right here, like midway up. She, she was behind a tree, I think. Oh no, I still see her, I see the rump. This shoot that goes narrow, and it looks like a kite almost. I've got, a, I've got two does and another fawn. So, dude, we've got 17 does, man. So basically what you're saying is the high buck country is overrun with deer? Yes. We have been just sitting here, no change of scenery. And we are just picking out deer after deer after deer. Our doe count is now at 17. From five today. From we five, started. starting from this morning, we have five does. And in the past like three hours or so, we've spotted 12 does and two bucks. I'm sure you guys are happy that we're not just uh, putting the camera on our faces again and you guys are actually looking at deer but I like a lot of you if you if you hunted I'm sure you understand the joy that Nate and I are having right now to go five days hardly spotting any deer and then out of nowhere like it's just deer everywhere which that's what's crazy to me yeah it's just Nate and I we've been just talking we're like it's only a matter of time before our hunt just switches and I think this is the moment where it's switching so we've got we're at 17 does and two bucks i'm about to get a little tiny bit of footage for you with both of them in the same frame dude there's deer everywhere it's like every shoot right now has a deer that is insane we've just found the spot 
that or we just know how to glass now? No, I don't think that we weren't glass. <laughs> no, they were just much lower because we couldn't see this from the top. Yeah. It's over there. That makes sense. Nate and I, we called it quits on glassing because it's too dark for the binos. And we're climbing back up. <laughs> this is where we're going up. But so you reach out our it. tents are just over here. Like we can stand and like touch the cliff. I was like, man, we really got to climb. But yeah, we just got to go this way, not up. We decided to not blindly pursue where we last saw that buck, so instead we're just going to sit here until we can hopefully lay, lay eyes on this buck again. All of the does that we saw this morning, they've eventually moved off into timber to bed as well. Yesterday we, we had overcast all day, so there was no sunlight like this at all. So it was very comfortable for deer to be bedding in the timber or in the wide open because again, even if they bed in the wide open, they were not getting beamed by the sun like they are today. So what we did was we took my Seek Outside Silex shelter and it's a shelter, so it's not a, necessarily a tarp that's designed to be used as like a glassing tarp. So we made do with what we had. We're gonna glass hard and if we see one, if we see a legal bucket at any moment, we're gonna devise a game plan and go after him. You see your buck yet? What? You see your buck yet? No. Why? Oh, I, I just thought with how dedicated you are, you see one by now. If dedication equaled big buck, <laughs> I'd have a big buck. <laughs> so what does big buck equal then? If dedication does not equal big buck. I think buck. It, it's the intersection of persistence and luck. There's that X factor. It's the fact... Oh, my eyes hurt. <laughs> <laughs> oh my not goodness. a man of his word. He said he was only going to come out if he saw a buck. <laughs> <laughs> Three and a half hours of glassing will make your eyes burn. No. Like if, you had the, if you had a double... Double eyepiece would be a lot better. Yeah. We saw this buck right up here. And he could be there. He could be here. He could be all the way up this basin. Or for all we know, he could be down here. You know, it's... He could be anywhere. All we know is he's not by the rock that we saw him. We are closing in on our final full day of high buck. Pretty crazy to say that. We've spent one week up here in the high country and uh, it's coming to an end. I mean, still just perched up on this rock and slowly picking out deer. We saw one doe bedded up near where we saw the two bucks last evening. I saw another doe crossing the uh, valley floor to our, so basically in front of us. And then just like earlier, I had a doe and a fawn uh, cross this valley floor to my right. That little fawn, you can still see the spots on its back, so it's definitely this year's fawn, and plus it was a pretty tiny body fawn, typical. I mean, that's what a fawn is, small body, because they're still growing. But, um, oh, there's a deer right there. 
Those are different deer. Dude, that guy's running around and playing. I see that. But uh, anyway, there's a little fawn, and his left ear is, like, droopy. Like, it is, it's not working properly, so I call him floppy. But I just had a, another doe and fawn pop out. These two are, like, running around playing. Well, it is last night here. Last night and our last dinner. So, coincidentally, we both have chicken Alfredo pasta. I have some from Ready Wise, and he has some from good old Peak Refuel. We're gonna do a taste test. <laughs> Mine looks pretty sorry. <laughs> Mine looks really good. Yeah. I feel like I added just perfect water. You did? Yeah. Two cups is too much. Ready wise, it says two cups for everything. It's not. Add half a cup. It's not that bad. I don't think it's peak refuel good. Should I try yours first before yeah. I dirty mine? Get, get a good light. Come on now. There you go. This is peak refuel. So good. I was pretty impressed with yours, actually. It's not bad. Not bad. It's a little more bland, but like it's super saucy. Like it's very creamy. Mm -hmm. You know, I, if I had to rate this on a scale of 10, this is like an 8 out of 10. Yeah. That thing, 10 out of 10. Yeah. I think that's the verdict. Peak refuel is just the king. Uh, their chicken alfredo pasta, it just has way more flavor and it just feels more fresh and healthy. The, the ready wise, it's just as good. Well, not just as good. It has a, I'd say it'd win in terms of creaminess, but in terms of flavor, it's a little bit more bland and it just doesn't have the same fresh mm -hmm. taste as peak refuel. I'm not complaining though. This is, this is actually Better pretty than good. Better than the mac and cheese. <laughs> Yeah, ready wise mac and cheese, solid three out of ten. This is the morning of day seven. And rock falling down. What was it called? A deer? <laughs> well, anyway, we just had a rock fall off this uh, shale face over here, but we got up this morning and glassed briefly and didn't find another deer and figured. We call it. Nate and I have uh, gave it everything we've got. I don't know what else we could have done. When we weren't hiking, we were glassing. And when we weren't glassing, we were hiking. So, you know, it's been a crazy seven days. Coming out of here with one notch tag with no meat. But that's just the way it goes sometimes. Head up, keep moving forward. Appreciate you 
following along on this high country adventure, season is only getting started. We're only in September and we still got October and November to go. Till then, see you back on the mountain.